So welcome to today's webinar on adding interactive element to videos. So we're going to be looking at the tool called Zaption. Um, in today's webinar, we're going to do a presentation mode demonstration, an independent work or self-paced mode demonstration. I'm going to review how to create a Zaption lesson. It's very, very easy. And uh, just give an overview of Zaption features. Okay, so let's just go started with the demonstration of the presentation mode. So I'm just going to open up my presentation in Zaption. So you can see here that I have my dashboard of Zaption. So this is the one that I want to play. When I put my cursor over, you can see that I have a couple of options. I have present, play, and analytics. I'm going to click present. Now for students, I'm going to start over a new presentation. Now for students, you're going to see zaption.com backslash join. So you're going to share that link with your students. And then they just simply need to put in the presenter's code. So I'm going to put the presenter's code into my iPhone. So it's R88WG. Okay. When your students enter the presenter's code, they're going to be um, asked uh, for their name and they can put in a name that you want them to use, any name that they want, if they want to stay anonymous, or you can actually ask them to put in their real name and their student ID. Okay, and then you're going to click tap continue. Okay, once I have everybody in there, you can see the participants on the left hand side of the screen. You can just press start presentation. Okay, so let's just give an overview of Zaption, the screen. So down here on the bottom right is the little full screen icon. And this is the way to end the presentation or um, to minimize. I'm not going to click that now because I don't want to end the presentation. You also have closed captioning options here if your video does have those options. Mine doesn't, so I won't be using that today. As well, if you have students who are joining the class late or maybe they get out of the presentation for some reason and need help getting back in, you can always click here to give them the presenter's code again. Okay, remember going to Zaption the join, not the login, and the presenter's code. The great thing about Zaption is that students actually don't need to log in. They only need the presenter's code. However, as a teacher, if you really want to keep track of them and what they're doing, they can create a login, but it's not necessary. And then you could just close that. So this is just the sample, and we're going to go through what you can add and uh, do with, with the, the Zaption lesson plan. So I'm going to press play. I have spent my entire life. Okay, and here's our first element. So you can see here, I have an option to put the element on the right hand side, um, and I can minimize it or I can show it. And also, look, if you see anything that's underlined, means that it has um, a hyperlink. So I, if it's for my students doing it as a self paced presentation, they can click on that to get more information if necessary. Okay. So I'm just going to press there and click play. Either at the schoolhouse, on the way to the schoolhouse, or okay. talking about... And as we go through, you'll notice I'm just going to be pausing to give you a little bit of information here and there. So here's another element that I've added to the presentation. So I've put an image on top of the presentation. Now you'll notice that there are um, words on this image. Now I've added those words outside of Zaption. In Zaption, there is a limitation. You can either add text or you can add images. You can't add both at the same time. Okay, so if you do want to add an image with um, text, you're going to have to add the text to the image before bringing it into Zaption. As well, now you can see here at the bottom right hand side that I have three students in the course. So if I just click on that, I can see the course, the students that are in. Um, also, you can see here that I have uh, enabled the viewer questions. So I'm just going to click that off. You can see here the viewer questions. I have no questions yet. Okay. I can disable that or enable that. Okay. But I'll keep it enabled. As well, you can see down here at my timeline that there's these little white lines. Each one of those lines represents um, an interactive or, or an element that I've added to the video. So I can either go back by clicking back or I can go forward to click to the next element. Or I can simply just go back five seconds in the video if necessary to review something with my students. So let's click house play and continue on. On the way to the schoolhouse are talking about what happens in the schoolhouse. Both Okay, and here's our first question. So which word means, uh, which words mean educator? Now you just go, the students will go down 
tap on their answers and click submit. Okay. As a teacher, I can view how many responses. So I have 100% right now. I can show the responses. So, okay, we have one that just says teacher and two that say all of the above. I can choose to lock. So I don't want to receive any more answers or I don't want them to change their answers. And now I can show them the correct answer as well. And you'll see that green is the correct answer. So all of the above. So one of our students got it wrong, okay? And as well, here on the left-hand side, you'll notice that there is a timer. So I can monitor how much time I'm spending on each of the questions. So it's a good tool just for classroom management and also to give your, your students a, a time limit to say 30 seconds or one minute. They can view the time there. Okay, so let's Both continue on. My parents on. were educators. My maternal grandparents were educators. And for the past 40 years, I've done the same thing. Okay, and so the next question has come up. Again, this is a little bit different. It is an open response question. So they can uh, respond with any words that they want. I'm gonna say yes, my aunt. Okay, and submit. And again, because it's open question, there's no right or wrong answers for this. So I don't have that little check mark, but I do have the show re responses and I can always lock the responses as well. Again, this is pausing the video with this question, but I can always remove the question to the side. So hide the question element, but that's only available if I put the questions to the side. If I put the questions directly on top of the video, you cannot hide it. You just have to continue on. And so needless to say, over those years, I've had a chance to look at education reform from a lot of perspectives. Some of those reforms have been good. Some of them have been not so good. And we know why kids drop out. We know why kids don't learn. It's either poverty, okay. low attendance, negative peer influences. We know why. Okay. But one of the You'll notice with this question, again, it's popping out from the side, but I'm not stopping the video. So with this one, you can have the option to stop the video, have the students answer the question, or let the video carry on. I've just paused the video to, to discuss this, but, but actually it would just carry on, and all of the same elements are still there. You'll also notice here on the left-hand side that I have a viewer question. So again, I have not enabled here, so the students can ask me a question in between other questions that they're receiving on their devices. So if I click on the little hand, I can see the question that was asked. How do I make this presentation? Well, I can um, answer that question right now, but I'm not going to. I'm going to answer the question a little bit later when I show you and demonstrate how to make this presentation in Zaption. But I can also show the names of the students to see who asked that question. Uh, was Sarah or hide the name. If I feel like I have answered that question, I can just simply click here the X and it will remove the question and that little one number will disappear. But I'm going to keep it there because I'm going to answer the question a little bit later. Okay, so let's continue Things playing. that we never discuss or we rarely discuss is the value and importance of human connection. Relationships. James Comer says that no significant learning can occur without a significant relationship. George Washington Carver says all learning is understanding relationships. And okay, so this is just an example of adding in a review component or a replay component. So I want the students to review what George Washington Carver says about all learning. So I've set it up so that it will review just that section of the video. So I could just click replay. George Washington Carver says all learning is understanding relationships. Okay, and then when it does it the second time, this time I can just click continue to continue on, or I can just press play. Everyone in this room has been affected by a teacher. Okay, Mama so died two years ago. That was just an example of the skip option. So there is an option within Zaption. So if there's a little bit of the video that you don't want your students to see or it's not important for the students, you can skip that part of the video, which is great. Okay, we're going to continue 92. playing. There were so many former students at her funeral. It brought tears to my eyes, not because she was gone, but because she left a legacy of relationships that could never disappear. Okay, so this is just an example of a numerical question. So you can see the number one saying that it is a numerical question. Um, the students can only answer with a number. So great for statistic quest statistical questions or for math teachers. Okay, and I'm going to submit. 
And again, it's all the same thing. You can show and hide responses. You can lock the questions. And we're going to push play. Can we stand to have more relationships? Absolutely. Will you like all your children? Of course not. <laughs> and you know your toughest kids are never absent. Okay. <laughs> never. And we're into the last element now, and this is the discussion board. So here you can put a question in and have your students uh, respond or post a comment on that question in the discussion board. So as the discussion comes through, you can see here's one from Christine. You as a teacher can delete it or reply to it, but also other students can reply to specific posts within the discussion board. You can post a comment yourself as a teacher. You can lock it. Again, you can continue playing the video. The discussion boards don't have the option to pause the video. They always have the option to uh, continue with the video. But you as a teacher can always pause them given chance to um, post in the discussion board or carry on with the video as you play. You won't like okay. them all. And once you're finished and you feel like the discussion board's done, uh, you can lock it from them. Okay, so these are all of the main features of the Zaption presentation mode. I'm going to leave that now by pressing exit. Okay, so I'm in my dashboard here and what I want to do is uh, show you what it looks like as a presentation for a self-paced presentation for the students to work through. So if you just scroll over now, we're not going to do present, we're going to do play. So if you click on to play, you'll see here um, the presentation and you just click start. So it looks pretty much the same, except the students get to control the pace and they can increase the speed, decrease the speed, and continue to play. So I'm just gonna to go to one of the options that we have. Minus 18 sucks all the life out of me. Plus two said I ain't all bad. Okay, and this is an option that uh, we didn't have. It's actually a draw option. So you just click and the students can draw their own little smiley face and then click submit okay and continue on remember you can see all of your students answers after in the analytics okay so everything um, that we've done previously is now available in the student self-paced mode as well okay so I'm just going to go back to my lessons and one of the last things that I want to show you is actually the what it looks like when you are creating the lesson. So I'm just going to go to this draft one and go to edit. And here you can see the video is here. I can add another video by clicking here and clicking into the UR, uh, adding the URL. Remember, you can add any video you can find on the internet. So Vimeo, YouTube, anything that has a URL on the internet, you can add. Or you can browse your videos here and add them upload them directly into Vimeo. So if you have videos that you've made yourself, you can also add to Zaption. Okay, I'm just gonna go out of that. So now you can see my elements here. Anything that's on the top uh, line means that it's actually on the video. Anything that's on the bottom line means that it's on the side. So again, if there's something that's on the side and I wanna change it to have it on top of the video, I just go to my element settings here. And so I click on my element settings and I click on on the window, window, but on the left. It's always going to be on the left and done. Also, here are all of my options that I can add to the video up on the top. And it's just a matter of clicking and dragging. So if I want to add a drawing, I can just click and drag and I can choose on the left or the right. Okay, so let me just find a place that doesn't have anything. And I can do drawing and I'm going to put on here. And this is where I'm just going to, again, make my little happy face. And that's the drawing that the students are going to see. If I want to add a draw response, I can click here. And this is what the students will see. And they actually will draw here. Okay. Once I finish adding all of my interactive elements into the presentation, so you can see here's the discussion board, and I'm ready to go, I can click Publish. Once you publish the video, you're ready to share it. And again, and it's in the same place. You can do present or you can share the link with your students here. Okay, and then you can view all the analytics here. Okay, so that's just a quick rundown of what Zaption is. We have a few things that I just want to make sure that you're aware of before we go. So I'm just going to open up my PowerPoint presentation again and go into this. So 
Uh, unfortunately, Zaption is not 100% free, but there are some free elements. So you can use Zaption in the free mode. And these are the things that are free. So the text slide, the image slide, the drawing option from the teacher side, uh, open response, multiple choice, check boxes, and trimming the video is possible. What is part of the pro package, the paid package, is the numerical response, the draw response, um, the discussion, replay or jumping, so skipping certain um, parts of the video, adding collaborators, so if you want multiple teachers to help you create the video, and also any of the privacy and the disabling the skipping option is also a pro feature. So a few other features that you need to be aware of is the analytics. So you can always view your analytics online, but if you want to download them to the Excel file, you do need to have a pro license. Um, the gallery is available for both pro and free, and that's when you can view other teachers' lessons and use them for yourself in, the le in your classroom. Um, if you want to combine videos, so if you want to have more than one video, you need to have the pro license. Um, presentation mode, not a problem. Independent work mode or self-paced mode is not a problem. It's available for the free as well. Okay, so uh, one thing that I didn't mention when I was editing my uh my presentation or my lesson is something you should be aware of. When you're editing already published presentation, you will be deleting all your responses. So just be aware of that. It's always better to copy the presentation, which is a pro feature, and then edit it to save your responses. Um, unfortunately, it is a pro feature. And getting to that, the pricing, um, actually, it's quite reasonable, $89 per year. Um, they also have an offer right now where you can take it for a test drive for 30 days for free. Another great option that they have right now is the Refer a Friend program. So if you send them uh, the link, copy your referral link and send it to your friends, you each get two months of Zaption Pro free. And that goes up to 12 months. So up to 12 months you can get for free by just referring a friend. So if you know another teacher who thinks that this tool would be great in the classroom, go ahead and send them your referral link and you get two months free. Um, it is something that I think is actually quite valuable. There is another um, option out there, another tool called Edpuzzle. And it's very similar to Zaption actually few differences. Zaption, no login required for the students, where in Edpuzzle, the students do need to log in. You can upload videos, but it is a pro option in Zaption, where in Edpuzzle, it's part of the free package. You can create groups again, but it's pro option. In Edpuzzle, you have to create groups. You have to create classes for your students to enroll in, and that's how they get their videos. Um, in Zaption, you can share via link, embed, or group or presentation code. Where Edpuzzle, you just have it through Edpuzzle, through the classes, and that's it. Um, no audio tracks or notes can be added at this time in Zaption, but you can add audio tracks and notes in Edpuzzle. Also, there's open-ended multiple choice questions, checkbox, and discussion boards in Zaption, where in Edpuzzle, it's only open-ended and multiple choice questions. As well, Zaption has the presentation mode that I demonstrated today, where Edpuzzle, there is no demonstration mode. It's mostly, um, it's a self-paced program for the students to review the videos, usually outside of class. Okay, so on that note, I'm going to say thank you. And if you have any questions, please go ahead and put those into the chat room or unmute yourself and go ahead and ask me.